Hello everybody, welcome to Monterey. I'm here with RM Sotheby's at their Lost and Found collection, an incredible collection of Ferraris found in Florida by a collector called Walter Medlin. And these cars have been stored for 50 years. They are true barn finds. Let's have a look. Okay, we're gonna do a pass off here. And look what we have in front of us, everybody. What a display of vintage 50s and 60s Ferraris. Front and center, this absolutely mangled Ferrari 500 Mondial. Believe it or not, this is a million dollar car. <laughs> So yeah, it's a 1954 Ferrari 500 Mondial Series 1. There was only a handful of these in the world. It's a four-cylinder Ferrari that was made for when the racing series, for when Formula 1, sorry, adopted Formula 2 regulations. And uh, this is looking pretty rough. Uh, it's going to take quite a lot of work to get this back into shape. But these four-cylinder Ferraris are exceedingly rare. And what can I say about this? Well, look, it looks like a lot of the chassis is intact here. See a lot of original metalwork, but man, oh man. So Walter Medlin, when these cars were stored, they were they went through a hurricane, Hurricane Charlie, I believe, in the mid 2000s. And that's maybe where some of this damage happened. I'm not sure, but what a wreck this little thing is. Holy moly. Not much left of this poor Ferrari. Oh my God. So somewhere in here is the chassis number. I don't know if we're going to be able to spy it. And it is, I don't see it anywhere here. They, all the tubes do look intact though. It does look very Ferrari in here. I see maybe it was modified for when it had a V8 installed in it. But yeah, there is a chassis number somewhere here. I don't think I can spy it right away. Wow. Original body work though. See where the dashboard was here. Definitely a right hand drive car. Then on the side here we have a transaxle and maybe rear suspension. My friend Godfrey tells me that this is the correct type 2MD. See that? So that's nice to see. And also beside the car are a bunch of spare engines. I believe this is a three-cylinder, four-cylinder engine. So these are pretty rare. I do really enjoy the early four-cylinder Ferrari history. It's very convoluted and complicated. There were a lot of chassis number changes. But, and they started, I believe, with two-liter, but this one is a correct style three-liter engine that could be used in this project. And yeah, wow, well, that's one way to start this lost and found collection. And uh, we'll start, we'll move along. Moving along into the 60s here. I believe this is a Ferrari 206. No, this is, this is not a Ferrari. Is this a Ferrari 206? I think this is a Ferrari 206. Do you know? Yes, it is from 1968. So this is a really, really desirable Dino because it has all aluminum body work. And it was the first of the series. The later ones were steel bodied. So here we are seeing one of the world's most desirable V6 Ferraris in a pretty dilapidated state. Don't know what's going on here. Maybe birds or something. Yeah, wow. Holy. You can see the license plates around here. What's that say? Carazia Laruni? So I have to say that the Medlands he had really good taste all these cars are not only they weren't bought on the cheap they were some of the best Ferraris that you could have bought he had really discerning taste case in point this 206 versus the later 246 definitely see cracked paint and uh, original alloy wheels old Dunlop tires paints cracking off the sill there Then next up is one of my favorite cars here that I was reading about. 
It's a Pininfarina Speciale on a 250 chassis. So when this car was made, Pininfarina had stopped making this body style before cars were kind of clothed like this. Because Pininfarina, I guess they just had too much work and the 250 GT was typically bodied by Buono and Elena. But for, the, for a few particular cars like this one right here, they made a beautiful coupe chassis. And this, I believe, was first owned by the King of Morocco. So yeah, look at that. This is the King of Morocco's XT50 GT. And look at the condition it's in now. Chipped paint, corroded fenders. So it must be a steel-bodied car. Maybe during the hurricane it lost the rear window. Kind of a peek in here. Still has original radio in there. Looks like original upholstery. Wow. What's in the back? The exhaust is in the back. Headliner's still intact. Holy. I'm gonna open the door here. Look at that, there's the original door panel. It's so rare to see a Ferrari like this, you know, a one of speciale in unrestored condition. What an opportunity for somebody to really make a beautiful car out of a project. I love the two-tone. So I think this is the original color. It's a striking color scheme. Kind of a, a low roof Berlinetta, I think the Ferrari guys call these. Again, the petrified uh, wire wheels. Wow. Pinifrina tag. I think these cars are special when it has a little crown on them like that. Wow. I am in love with this one. Just scroll out and have a look at this. We got fog lights here inset into the grill. A nice straight looking aluminum grill here. Of course the Ferrari badge, I love seeing original stuff like this. That can go right back on, isn't that wonderful? Headlight trims. Wow, so it's a 1956 Ferrari 250 Coupe Speciale by Pininfarina. And for that they want 1.7 to 2.3 million. That's the estimate on this car. Okay, and beside that is an absolutely beautiful 275 GTB with alloy bodywork. I was reading about this car a little bit. It's one of the first alloy cars, and it also has a really high spec carburation. And the first client, I believe, took this car to the Targa Florio, so it has race history as well. How do you beat that? Let's have a look around it here. Huge wraparound windscreen. If I look inside here. Looking pretty good condition inside, I have to say. Moving backwards. Yeah, I think this is my pick so far. I just think the 275 is the quintessential Ferrari sports car. I love the fastback design. And this one having Targa Flora race history, being an alloy car, unrestored. Does it get any better? I don't think so. Love the quad ansa exhaust hanging out the back chrome looks good very complete car have another look inside here wood veneer dashboard wow yeah i'll take this one so yeah, it's a 1965 Ferrari 275 GTB 6C alloy, two to 2.5 million. It's hard to believe these cars in this condition can be worth so very much. Then we have a 1965 Ferrari 275 GTS. So this is kind of the luxury cabriolet version of the 275 GTB. This one's looking in great condition compared to the others. Have a look inside. Yeah, wow, what a great car. Not a whole lot of patina like the other cars. I wonder how much of this is original. This could be one of the best 275 
GTSs in the world. I'm moving right along, one of three, 512 BBs prepared for the 24 hours of Le Mans. Isn't this spectacular? Look at the exhaust hanging out here. Wow. Of course, campaign by Luigi Cinetti, as we can see. And huge rear wing put on here. Super wide flares. Rear wheels are sticking way out. Wow, look at these Campagnola wheels. So there's the North American Racing Team banner. That was probably because uh, Shuderia Ferrari did not want to admit and campaign this on their own. But yeah, what an aggressive Berlinetta Boxster here. Rick Carey's getting a shot. So yeah, this is specifically a 1978 Ferrari 512 BB Competizione. Maybe we can sneak inside here and have a look. I'm not sure if it'll, oh yeah, here we go. So this is where this car really differs. It's totally lightened and stripped out inside. You can see all the electrics are brought inboard, ingress, cooling duct for the driver here. And uh, funnily enough, it has a regular driving seat on the left-hand side and a racing seat on the right-hand side. So I don't know quite what's going on there few games are being played again for the race car brake reservoirs are brought ingress a little cute cover here that's neat but I think for the most part this is a standard spec 512 although I'm not sure I'm not a I'm not I don't know my 512s all that well but yeah what a spectacular piece man this would be something to drive wouldn't it for 24 hours we'll close that up so for this they're looking at they think this is worth 1.8 to 2 million. What do you think, everybody? What do you think? Well, what a spectacular lineup that's been this morning. What a privilege it is to be here in Monterey and see cars like this. I'll get a kick out of these unrestored cars. Next up, one of the most unusual 250 GT Lusos of all time. At one point, I think it was a British owner decided to turn their 250 GT Lusso into a kind of a GTO replica, 330 LMB replica. And I think this car went to Williams and Pritchard and got this competition style body. So if you buy this car, please, if anybody buys this car, leave it like this. Because it it's so much more distinct than all the others. 1964 Lusso. 600,000 to a million, so that's quite the spread. It's hard to value cars like this. It's the only one in the world like this that was modified, I believe, in the late 60s, early 70s. I love it. What do you guys think? Such a cool shape. Nowadays, this would be a big no-no taking an old vintage Ferrari, removing the body, and putting on a, a more modern competition body. But I think it's been a total success. I like this. Side exhaust. Just have a look inside. Then we'll pull back. What a cool shape. And I have to say that when this thing was modified, these cars weren't worth as much as they are now. So it really enabled specials like this. Okay, we'll keep going down the line. We've got a Daytona flat tire, 1972, 365 GTB4 Daytona, 400 to 500,000. We got a Ferrari 308 GTB, Pretty iconic Ferrari car. This one happens to be a fiberglass version. So pretty desirable, 175 to 200,000. You can see the fiberglass work here and the damage. This probably happened during Hurricane Charlie. Moving on, 1967, 330 GTS. This is a wonderful driver's car. I know because I've been in a few of them before. They are just the right size. V12 engine, 
really wonderful styling 1.5 to 2 million pretty expensive open top ferrari moving right along we get into kind of ferrari's two plus two kind of larger ferraris less desirable this one has absolutely abysmal paintwork i think it's a 365 let's have a look yeah, it's, no, it's a 330 GT, sorry. So I think this is kind of an interim car. 150 to 250,000. So larger Ferrari, I guess they were going for that American market, I would have to guess. Right hand drive. Rick Carey just told me it's a right hooker. Well, look at that in there. It looks exceedingly original, original leather. Look, the, the wood's delaminated from the steering wheel. Wow. But look at that. There's the original Pininfarina upholstery. Wow. The veneer on the dashboard. Yeah, very unusual right hooker. Maybe UK delivery. I'm not sure. I love the blue interior. Oh, wow. This just keeps going. What a collection we have here at the lost and found section of Arm Sotheby's Monterey sale. Holy smokes. So I think this is a 250 GTE Series 2. It was an extension of these 330. So this was the larger version and this was the three liter version. Gonna move a little faster, we're 16 minutes in. So yeah, 250 GTE, let me get the specifics. 1965 330 GT. Wow, I was wrong again. Look at the double headlights up front. Those are very controversial feature, those double headlights. So they call us a 330 GT Series 1 interim. 100 to 200,000. And oh man, look at this. Definitely survived some damage from Hurricane Charlie. Another big two plus two Ferrari in bronze, a deep bronze. Now this must be a 365, right? Yeah, here we go. So it's a 69, 365 GT, two plus two, 170, no, 125,000 to 200,000. Wow. You can see right through the front windscreen. Look at that. <laughs> Just sneak a peek in here. Again, original leather, original fitment. These are things we only see with long-term storage. And so another 512, this is the production version of the Le Mans race car we saw. I think it's a 512. Yep, 512 BB, 100,000 to 200,000. Looking very complete with minimal damage. And a Testarossa. 1981 Testarossa, 75 to 150,000. Big spreads on these cars. Hard to know how to value these cars that have been sitting for so very long. Yeah, very nice line there. And yes, yet more cars from the Lost and Found collection. This is a lot of, I mean, this many barn find Ferraris at once. Is this going to oversaturate the market? Like, it's so incredible. Here we go. Uh, 250. GT Pininfarina. Is this a Pininfarina? No, this might be... I'm not sure. It's a Series 2 Coupe. So a lot of these cars lost their bodies early on to make GTO replicas, Ferrari competition car replicas, so it's really great to see one here that survived. I believe this is Pininfarina bodywork. When I first started doing, you know, auctions like this 20 years ago, the, this car would have a hard time fetching $50,000. And now they have since become million dollar cars. Oh, look at that. It's on vintage Pirelli Cinturados. How about that? One of my favorite tires. Look at those. They're probably the old original units. That's really neat. Let's have a look inside. Again, how many times are you going to see original here, folks? Look at the leather. It's really thick, natural tone leather in there. 
Wow. Great Ferrari 250 GT, 200 to 300,000. Look at the bumper on there for the European license plate. That might be unique. This might be the cheapest car of the whole collection. What's this, a 410? I can't remember. Again, part of the two plus two suite of Ferraris. What do we got? It's a Ferrari 400 automatic. Ooh, automatic slush box, no. 20 to 50,000, there you go. Another Daytona? Medlin had two Daytonas. That's pretty impressive. Looks like an early car, maybe. 71, 365 GTB4. And the car that was kind of released alongside it, that's 365 GTC4. Essentially the same car, except the GTC4 has a back seat. Well, we're nearly done. We're at the last car, but it happens to be one of my favorites. This is a Ferrari 410 Super America Coupe Series 1. Beautiful bespoke Pininfarina bodywork on the long wheelbase chassis with the big Lampretti V12 engine. That is just stunning. Look at that. There's a chicken in there. What, what was that inside the car? Yeah, what's that chicken doing under there? What's that chicken doing under there? Must have been inside the car. <laughs> but yeah, look at the front bodywork here. It looks really, really straight. The grill, the grill shroud, the aluminum, the bumper and these little finishers. All this stuff was expertly made by Pininfarina and it's so nice, just nice to see it here and intact like this. Now th this was the ultimate Ferrari grand touring car of the time, two seater. Oh, less than 20 made. It is just so, so wonderful. And to see one here unrestored today, I'm in heaven, you know. If I could buy this thing and just get it running and keep it like it is, I would. But I, unfortunately, that's not what's going to happen. I don't, I don't, I have a, that's not, I'm pretty sure we're going to see this car fully restored the next time we see it. Funny taillights back here. Look at these. Probably off a Fiat or some small Italian car. Look at that last registered in 1978. How about that? Wow. Let's have a look inside. So these cars were really, really top level, you know, lined glove boxes, the whole meal deal. This one even has uh, headrests. Look at that. Maybe the driver's side one is missing, but there's one for the passenger side. That's very unusual. Ha! The, the leather upholstery on the dashboard is just totally shot. Look at that. It's showing 32,000 miles on the Veglia gauges. Holy. See the way the door panel's done? Wow. I don't know if we can sneak a peek in the big engine here, can we? Oh, we can, look at that. So there it is, that's a big Lampretti 4.9 liter V12, how about that? Amazing, look at how petrified it all is. Wow. Holy moly. Look, original wing nuts there on the air filter. Oh man, I am falling in love. I'm really falling in love with this thing. Oh my God. This is definitely my pick. 1956 Ferrari 410 Super America. Holy moly. What a wonderful car to buy and preserve for all these years. Wow. All right, everybody. Well, it's been 24 minutes of barn fine Ferraris. What do you think? What would you come home with? I'd be taking that Ferrari 410 right there, that beautiful red one. Yeah, so there we are. That's it, that's my tour of the Lost and Found collection here with RM Sotheby's. Thanks for watching everybody. If you have any comments, please, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And yes, I will be following up with some of the other amazing cars down there. They're gonna sell over $200 million worth of cars here in Monterey. This is the top car auction in the world. All right. Thanks for watching. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.